Hi guys, it is February 4, 2020. This is radar, current radar. Current radar. Look, Washington, more precipitation that you're getting. Answer me, please, you guys, in Washington, because doesn't necessarily mean that there's precipitation. That is the new radar that we have. Sure has a lot of new signatures, like the nanotail. Yes, I've pointed out that our storms have tails, and they usually hang or even grow because they just don't want to leave Texas. See? Nanobots. Nano storms. Nanotechnology controlling your weather. You like how straight edge the storm is? Yeah, you like these extremely low frequencies blasting away here, North Carolina? How about some extremely low frequencies down here in Florida? Nanotechnology controlling our weather. That's very, very annoying to me, especially when you can't get through to people extremely low frequencies, Southern California, um, extremely low frequencies, Michigan. But Washington, let me zoom in. Okay. Extremely low frequencies, very obvious, right here, Western Washington, extremely low frequencies, Montana, extremely low frequencies, Montana, extremely low frequencies, Oregon, and extremely low frequencies right off the coast. Why is that important? Extremely low frequencies can control weather. Extremely low frequencies, another place in Oregon, and another place in Oregon. Extremely low frequencies can create earthquakes. They can modify, they can control, they can steer weather fronts. Oh, they can do an awful lot. Why don't we go to, oh, yes. All right, MMB. Showing you nanotechnology. This ain't mother nature, not at all. And it's very obvious that it ain't Mother Nature. Because Mother Nature does not work in defined lines. She doesn't create right angles. And she doesn't create all different types of, well, seemingly cloud substance that, well, you got the lines, you got the thick, straight edge cloud. And of course, you've got air masses going in all different directions. And wow, you sure do have an awful lot of these lines that are not chemtrails. These are nanobots. Nanobots. Nanobots I have on my weather modification playlist. Both channels, Never Lose Truth and Never Lose Truth 2, Kafka, weather modification. And I believe I have a nanotechnology playlist on this channel. Check it out if you want to know how nanotechnology has taken over our weather. I don't want to have to prove everything that I say in every video. It's way too tiring, and I just can't do it anymore. Because you know something? I don't need to. It's so obvious. It's painfully obvious. The obvious, it just gets painful to argue over and over again. Because how do you argue the obvious? How do you do that? Okay? So, you like this right angled twist? in the nanostratus cloud and the, oh yeah, all right, what, what do they call that? The, um, I don't know, bombogenesis or whatever. Um, it's all new, it's all new. These new terms, well, they had to come up with it because 
clearly. Well, I guess they were afraid that the public might look at the satellite and go, this doesn't look quite natural. What's going on? Oh, it's a bombogenesis, and I guess it's caused by climate change. So they are all over the world, actually. And they just, well, right-angled, straight-lined, and then let's just twirl this around, and we'll twirl it around for a while, because this will be ah, the new atmospheric river that they'll push down once you get through this atmospheric river that has brought you more rain in Washington. A meteorologist I listened to yesterday said the good news was it was done, it was over. But I did say, well, I don't know if it's over because I've been seeing forecasts that it's not over. But hell, why not say it's over? And then other meteorologists saying it's not over. Well, well. The propaganda reports. People aren't even questioning the inconsistencies with the news that they're hearing or the forecasts that they're getting. From their mainstream meteorologist, I had a neighbor tell me that, well, one neighbor told me that her father, who lives, I don't know, 30 minutes away from here, Anderson, South Carolina, had snow. And he sent her a picture of these huge flakes. Snow. I think Greenville, South Carolina, had snow. And another place had snow. And the other neighbor said, yeah, I heard on the news, and she didn't say meteorologist, but a meteorologist said, well, we didn't see that coming. I I'm wondering now uh, if the nanobots, the self-replicating nanobots, have taken over. And that's why we're getting the, well, it sounds like they're reporting for Saturday Night Live. These, well, I, I read the forecasts. I don't watch the news, but in reading them, I'm astounded that people are not questioning what they're reading, or maybe they are, maybe they are. Maybe they're screaming. Maybe they're like flipping out, opening up their window. I'm mad as hell, I can't take it anymore. I don't know what the hell is going on. Why are these meteorologists preparing us for weather that they're not even sure is coming? Why are they saying that we're gonna get severe storms when nothing happens? Why, why? Maybe, maybe Americans are screaming. But we wouldn't know it because censorship is really a happening thing in our great democracy. Democracy? It's never been a democracy, Carol. Oh, yeah, okay, wait, I know that. How many times did I say in videos, I thought it odd. I thought it odd. I remember in the early 90s, I was a news buff. All of a sudden, I was hearing everybody call this country a democracy, a democracy, a democracy. And I, it was, uh, well, why are they saying that? Because they wanted people to forget that, well, we're supposed to be this constitutional republic. So they just kept bringing up democracy. No, this is not Mother Nature at all nanobots. You see them? Little bots that fill the atmosphere now. That does not make me happy. So, yes, we have um, what's, what's really obvious is all the different compositions and, well, um, 
atmosphere sure is making a whole lot of different kinds of clouds that you shouldn't be seeing if they were natural. You like this line? That's just hell. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to march to my own drum, my own beat. You guys go on up and I'm going to go on down here. Maybe I'll meet up with this that is well, going in a northeasterly direction as this goes in a north, what, south, what, whatever. We're just going to go all over the place. We're going to turn around here. We're going to turn around and we're going to feed more nanobots into the atmospheric river where you're going to be getting apparently now a lot of snow in Washington. I believe Oregon as well. Uh, it's going to be very good. Oh, wait a second. No, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. That was the wrong atmospheric river. All right. This is coming down here. This is going up here. All right. So this is twirling around, feeding into our Bombo Genesis that has just been parked. And okay, so this one is going. It's going. Well, it's stretching. It's stretching northeast and to the west, the rectangle pattern, the nice rectangle long atmospheric river. Because they're not atmospheric rivers, but they have to say something. Come on. You know, these, these incredibly psychopathic, narcissistic, I'm, uh, I'm all about myself. I'll read the propaganda reports. I don't care because I get a nice paycheck. So I can lie and lie and lie. I don't care that people are being destroyed. I don't care that people are losing their homes. I get a nice paycheck. And maybe they won't hit my area with some kind of severe weather. Possible tornadoes. Now, those forecasts we get all over the country. Tornado, possible. And how about this? Severe weather coming. Yep. So, we've got air masses going in different directions down here. We've got the nano factory over here that is feeding our, well, it's, I think at some point it's just going to be a perpetual cloud over the United States. Now, as you can see, this is not Mother Nature because this right angled all right, we're going to bring it in a subtle, in a subtly, in a, a what, what, well, we're just going to bring it down and then swing it back up. You know, the more obvious it becomes, the harder it gets. The harder it gets. Because you can't keep arguing the obvious. I just, I... You can't, you can't, because, well, then you're like insane, saying the same thing over and over and over again. Am I expecting different results? Doing the same thing over and over again? Why? Why am I doing this? I feel it's important to point out the truth feel it's important to point out that our mainstream meteorologists are lying through their f teeth and people are getting hurt, life is getting destroyed, and that's not okay. Now anybody could see this, and when they're looking at this, they know, okay, this is not natural, something else is happening, and then you would expect that individual to look into what else could be happening. 
because climate change does not make little pasta clouds. She doesn't, okay? Mother Nature, oh, well, Mother Nature gone amok, run amok, whatever. Um, I guess it's not Mother Nature. Climate change, oh, right, it's man causing climate change. You're driving an SUV and, well, you're sitting in air conditioning, so therefore, <clears throat> you are creating that climate change and well that climate change now has created little pasta spiral clouds and climate change well climate change has brought the right angled flip up and climate change has stalled clouds while other clouds are feeding the stalled cloud and then they'll take off into a nice thick and well a very expansive expansive area yeah but we're going to stall out and it's going to be very defined, a cloud. And we're just going to keep bringing in more cloud. The nano factory. All we hear is climate change, climate change, climate change. I can't believe the truth is dying and people are still just kind of hooked on their mainstream drug, the lie, hooked on the lie. They like the lie. The lie demands nothing of them, it demands nothing of them. Except, of course, when the lie is at their doorstep and it is a tornado that destroys their home. Or how about those flash flooding events? So, we have now, you can see, that all of these lines are developing. They're, they're coalescing. They're coming together to make thicker cloud, which eventually this stationary cloud underneath they will eventually transport that on up and of course yep another the clouds just go on forever on forever rolling around and most of our country now when i go to these satellites a whole lot of it is covered in massive cloud. And they come from the coast through, uh, come from the Pacific. You've got the southern, it's kind of like, you know, a southern calm, you know, a military nanobot factory produces the cloud that goes through Mexico, Texas. They usually do have another arm right here, as you can see. See how nicely straight lined the cloud is. Um, so they come in from the Gulf or off the coast of Mexico. And you guys, I mean, how could anybody possibly think that this is Mother Nature? Look at this. What's all that gray stuff? Don't know. I do not know. But Mother Nature was never so ugly. But she sure didn't 
spit out cloud looking like this. And then, of course, for the uh, north, you have your nanobots that, well, I now see them pretty much off the coast of California all the time. Circling around, as they are right now. But you get your cloud manufactured up north and very often it swings into Canada comes on into the Northwest it's becoming quite predictable and I for one really don't like it. I don't like it at all. And it would be, it would be actually easier if it were not so friggin' obvious, but when it's so obvious that no, you do not have to go to school and then become a professional in the profession of meteorology. No. You just have to understand that Mother Nature doesn't make these kinds of clouds. She doesn't stall out a cloud and let it just sit over one area. She doesn't have these fine lines. She doesn't make right angle turns. There are times when I just feel like I'm going to cry. Yeah. Southern California. Come on. Southern California. Come on. Why, man, why? Why? Why can't I get things to work? And all I can say is it's a good thing those winds have finally started to die down over the last couple of hours. But today about 24,000 people were without power. Right now about 3,800 still in the dark. And we do still have the potential of seeing more trees and down power lines because those gusty winds will be with us again tonight. At the corner of Vermont and Florence, you see this large L Supermart uh, sign came over and crushed that car in the parking lot. Gusty winds were too much for this giant sign in South LA Monday afternoon. Although this car was crushed, no one was injured. Another car was smashed overnight in the San Fernando Valley. And in Panorama City, this tree knocked down the Clearfield Avenue street sign. Traffic came to a stop on the 118 freeway near Reseda Boulevard in Porter Ranch when this Lyft driver plowed into an unexpected object. I'm on the slowest lane. It's a tree. It's almost like it came out of nowhere. It just, I was the first one to hit it, I guess. The impact caused major damage to his car. Another falling tree made this street in the Hollywood Hills impassable and also cracked the sidewalk. But none, but none quite as massive as what came down in Sierra Madre. It's amazing. They said a tree that big and how bad that wind was howling up here this morning and last night. It was uh, pretty wild. This enormous tree was uprooted, burying a car and damaging two homes on Fairview Avenue. It also took out some power lines on the way down. And we could be in for another similar night. All right. Yeah, another similar night. So I'm talking to a subscriber in Southern California, and she tells me that it's 50 degrees when it was 76 here in uh, South Carolina. All right. So um, 
I guess I was having California's weather and she was having our weather and well, it's climate change, you know. Climate change has just flipped everything around. Don't you listen to the news, Carol? Oh, well, I guess I just go a little bit deeper and check out. Hey, thumbs up. Thumbs up. I check out what these guys are saying. And lo and behold, lo and behold, what they're saying, it's just a lie. It's a lie. January, January this and this is, is Granite Falls, just northeast, northeast of Seattle. You saw, you see the raging river. There are a number of rivers on the rise. There has been some home flooding as well in uh, Salton, Washington, and people walking through some of these floodwaters. Records broken across the board for much of January. Forks seeing rain every day of the month. Their wettest January and wettest month on record, and thanks in part to this atmospheric river now pouring into the beginning of February. Atmospheric river. It's an atmospheric river. Now. These are green screens. They don't see it. But, hey, look at this. I'm just going to throw up my hands and hopefully I'll get, you know, my body language that is um, in harmony with uh, what you'll be seeing. <sighs> Straight edged. You like this box? Okay. They not only lie incessantly, lie to you, but you're not even seeing what's going on. Now, he doesn't see anything, but what you see, you should be questioning. Why are we having these bizarre clouds? Why do we have this straight line right here? Oh, please. Please. Mysterious booms rock residents across Carolinas. North Carolina, South Carolina, upstate South Carolina. Who knew? A seconds-long boom shook windows, piercing the stillness of a quiet upstate neighborhood. What neighborhood? I'd like to know. In North Carolina, the rumblings jolted residents and rocked houses near the coast. Mysterious. Unexplained. Don't know what it was. Scalar weapons? Crossing of laser beams, perhaps? When did this occur? The news is dated January 17. Any of you guys, Southern California... Um, South Carolina, North Carolina, did you hear those booms? I've heard strange booms. I don't even know if I did hear it. Can't remember. So, what else do we have? A lot of earthquakes. Tennessee. A lot of earthquakes. I had two earthquakes, or I believe three now, past 24 hours. Four, past seven days. 28, last 28 days, 30 days, 30 days. All right, where are they? Around the new Madrid fault line. Missouri, as well. Arkansas, as well. Whole lot of strange things happening. And I guess the climate change would create earthquakes, right? Snow. Snowflake spotted across North Carolina. And I think I told you about my neighbor who said, Hey, my father had snow. Sent me a picture. Really big flakes. What's going on? The other neighbor. Well, I heard on the news. The weather reporter say, Well, we sure didn't see this coming. You know, these forecasts. Severe weather can occur during February. The weather pattern will behave more like April rather than February. I read last week forecasts, severe weather, but it didn't happen. Hmm. Well, I guess we're having severe weather again. And you know what? That severe weather 
It always looks the same. Pretty much the same. It's coming from the same place. Stretching on up all the way into Canada. <sighs> yeah, but it's too early to fully gauge the magnitude of thunderstorms spanning Tuesday, February 4 to Thursday, February 6, and this February 2. So they can't forecast how strong the thunderstorms will be in two days. Hmm. They used to give out five-day forecasts, and you know what? On the whole, they were pretty much accurate. Now, they can't, even within a day, within the same day, forecast. In fact, you get tornadoes, and you ain't getting any warnings. Where did it come from? Hey, snow. Didn't see that coming. And you're not questioning this? Now, I'm not talking to you guys. I know you guys question. Well, you don't have to question it. You know what's happening. Interstate 10, 20, 40 corridors. Funny how the forest, how, how, how our forecasts seem to indicate the interstates where our Glen Towers that emit electro, um, sorry, extremely low frequencies into the atmosphere to control the weather. They line our interstates. So now we get forecasts, and inevitably you will read interstate, whatever the number is, that's where it's going to be happening. But this is a heads up. It's a heads up or, or an early alert, whatever you want to call it on thunderstorms that could ramp up enough to threaten lives and property, but they can't forecast it for you, not even within two days. So what is that about? You know, I did say in videos a while back, the weather terrorists are now in complete control and our mainstream media reporters are just not getting their propaganda reports in time. Or the commanders are deciding, taking way too long to decide what kind of weather they're going to be bringing a specific region. So the propaganda reports, well, they can't go, oh, but they do go out. That's why we have these mainstream media <laughs> reporters who claim and they did, hurricanes that developed off the coast of Mexico, a very odd spot for hurricanes to develop, and they sat there for five days, twirling around, twirling around, and then they oh, release them. They go through Mexico, and then they were going through Arizona. Hurricanes, they dissipate when they hit land, but no, not now. They just continue to go on up to Arizona, and it was going on up to Utah, and then it was clearly going to be making a right-hand turn to go east all the way that hurricane and what 60 million or 210 million threatened by whatever hurricane the name they named it that's what they were forecasting and then the next day nothing oops well we got the wrong propaganda report. Nothing happened. So now they're calling for a polar vortex that's going to make it very, very cold, though it's very warm. And when, are the, when is this coming? I think it's coming here. The colder air is expected to slice into the central states during the first part of next week. And then it's going to get really, really cold in the south again. These extremes are wreaking havoc with all life. People are getting sick. For this reason, doesn't matter what reason, whatever reason they give, we expect the upcoming big discharge of Arctic air to target the interior west northern plains initially, where it might be more persistent 
but they don't know. It could be hanging about for a while. No matter what, we do not see a six to eight week outbreak, which we normally see with these polar vortexes. It's going to be seven to 14 days or even shorter. However long they are going to be icing up our air. Yes, we have the technology to do that. So this pol polar vortex, eh, we'll just throw that out. The public will buy anything. Doesn't matter. We'll just say that polar vortex. And here we have temperatures forecast to climb into the 60s and 70s over much of the south with a few 80 degree readings possible. Wow, gonna be hot. Uh, and then we're gonna get moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, strong winds aloft associated with an approaching southward dip in the jet stream. Uh, I have on my channel plenty of evidence how they can control the jet stream how they can create the low pressures and the high pressures. and But reading this, exactly how much sunshine occurs ahead of a push of colder air may determine how strong the thunderstorms become. Sunshine would help heat the lower atmosphere and could give thunderstorms extra vigor. However, extensive cloud cover and areas of rain would tend to limit the severity of the thunderstorms. How much wind shear or the turning of winds at different layers in the atmosphere will exist? Who writes this? Do people write this or computers writing this? Uh, the grammar sucks. Okay. Will exist could determine whether tornadoes develop. Tornadoes, tornadoes, always with that tornado or straight line winds. Uh, winds, we're, we're not sure it could be southerly direction near the surface back to the southwest wait and back to the southwest or west aloft then rotating thunderstorms can occur and that will bring a greater risk of tornadoes being spawned okay whatever i don't what do you say how do you tune into your noaa weather radio just tune in okay and do make sure that that radio is on and the batteries are good and that you're receiving a clear signal okay kids make sure it's on kids pretend you're an adult and make sure your radio's on the batteries are good which they do repeat they repeat it they do repeat it here Battery's good. That it's on. Receiving a clear signal. Goodbye. <laughs>